Thank you, Speaker. Last weekend, when I was home in Oregon, I noted that uh, gasoline prices uh, reached the highest level in history. And I know that my state wasn't alone. We apparently have the fourth highest prices in the United States. Other states are even higher, and I assume that records were set everywhere. Now, that might be well and good if it was all due to free market forces and underlying costs of doing business. But I fear it's not. We've been through this before. During the first Persian Gulf War, Desert Storm, we saw a huge run-up in oil and diesel prices and aviation fuel, uh, which caused a tremendous amount of dislocation in the economy. But the economy was nowhere near as fragile as it is today. And then we found out a little bit later that the oil companies had taken advantage of the war, war profiteering. They had, in fact, raised their prices far in excess of the underlying costs of crude and any other additional costs they might have incurred because of the war in Iraq. Well, now here we are a decade later. Again, uh, it appears that uh, the United States will soon be at war in Iraq, and we're seeing record prices at the pump. And again, they're talking about the underlying price of crude and the instability of demand. But the increases at the pump and the increases for the aviation industry and the increases for the truckers far, far, far exceed the increases in the underlying cost of crude. And plus, many of these oil companies are selling themselves their own crude oil or they've hedged the price or they have special deals with the OPEC cartel. No, plain and simple, they've begun war profiteering this time before the war has started. It's time for Congress to take action. The economy is weak. 308,000 people lost their job last month. A number of airlines are teetering on the edge of bankruptcy, and a number of them say that if a war happens and fuel goes up anymore, it costs them $180 million per penny. They won't be in Chapter 11 reorganization bankruptcy. They will be insolvent and out of business, costing tens of thousands more jobs and more harm to the economy. Also, a few multinational oil companies can squeeze excess profits out of American, rate, uh, out of American uh, airlines and families and truckers. The president needs to take action. He could release fuel from the National Petroleum Re Reserve, the, uh, the oil reserve, but he's chosen not to do that. So I've introduced a bill to give him more specific direction, to give him authority once held by President Richard Nixon to stabilize the price of fuel with a fair rate of return to these oil companies and making them justify a run-up in price beyond a price that prevailed uh, a year ago today. And secondly, uh, to have the president draw down the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, in order to help drive down prices, mitigate supply, require the oil companies now and in the future to maintain minimum inventory levels so they can't uh, cry a wolf and jack up the price every year where they do when they switch from home eating oil to gasoline and all those things they love to do, and then they have a refinery fire, nothing anyone could ever expect. Ban the export of Alaska oil. We're going to hear arguments we should allow drilling in Anwar, but guess what? All the Alaska oil can and probably will be exported because this Congress, against my will, lifted the ban on the export of Alaska oil. And then the administration's all for free trade. OPEC is not free trade. That cartel, those people, Saudis and others, are conspiring to drive up the price of oil, setting the price of oil in violation of all the agreements of the World Trade Organization. I'm not a big fan of that organization, but this administration who loves it and wants to expand its authority should use the authority it has to object to that price fixing. It violates all of the tenets of GATT and the World Trade Organization. So it's time for strong action here in Congress and at the White House to stop the war profiteering, the price gouging, driving more Americans out of work, bankrupting airlines, you know, idling trucks, and the commerce of this country, all so a few multinational oil companies can run record profits for the next couple of quarters. Choice seems pretty easy to me. We'll see what my colleagues and the president think. Mr. Wolf from Virginia. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. 